How many heartbreaks do you need to stop looking at crumbling leaves? The reason this episode is titled this is for us to recognize and be aware that if I looked at a leaf on a ground filled with a lot of leaves and I was bothered by how each shape was being changed, if I was bothered by uh, that scale of change, how many heartbreaks would I have? How much change would change me? When we think in these terms, we're not really thinking. We actually are just aware of things. Similar, it's, it's, it's as if the reason gravity was profound is because we all stopped to see what's going on. And so life holds many patterns that are new to us, that we will discover to be new. And so the blend of your consciousness and the action that you are now is really based on what you are in your environment. Your greatest understanding of yourself will come from the you that is most observable observable all of it and also understand that some elements of yourself you cannot observe but you may you all you have always known you know it and hence you have always known where you are however there are many fluctuations of moments of experience in your awareness at this point. On a very subtle level, um, there is more of an involvement with an omniscient, omniscient experience. Guys, I'm talking about consciousness. I'm talking about what many have pursued to find and found that there's nothing there. When you look for that which is your awareness, um, you work with what you have in its most uh, absolute way you you try to look at things absolutely completely with clarity without any opinion from yourself to cl clutter it but having access to all opinions in other words your your sense of idea changes into a sense of being in which all ideas permeate from and so the experience of man was always a very fragile and flexible thing. Your experience as a human being can alter and you, your experience will no longer be identified in the limited range of what is known as human experience. And therefore one may even profoundly perceive that we too are a gaze of a deeper eye. And when I say eye, guys, it is not symbology, it is not some weird thing, it is sight, it is vision. It is presence. You're present. You know, I'm not talking about anything. A lot of what I talk about can be applied to yourself uh, when you are in solitude or in isolation. Because in isolation, one may re become to actually relook at their awareness. They can really look at themselves and see what is bothering them, and in a sense, drop the act. Once you drop the act, you realize that your depression, your pain, was because. You are trying to keep a sense of self in a certain state of behavior, but you naturally, you're naturally not gravitating there. So you need to begin with self-awareness and so a comfort in really seeing who you are and be yourself. Sometimes we ask questions and they're not even our questions. I found myself to answer some of my own deepest questions, but at the same time, some basic things I ask and I notice it's not even me asking it's just the voice that was present in another condition that was similar to that so such resonance is one where rudeness cannot continue where if your if your mind is not aware of what is going on where are you you know so work with yourself, explore yourself and know that I am someone who is just communicating ideas in which you are putting the value and meaning in. You're extracting meaning in some form of anything from my talk.
so as you extract from my talk really look at where you're extracting from why you're making these decisions why you believe in this why you don't believe in this why you know this why you don't know this you know look at all this stuff because the absorption of the idea which is this transparent lens that is the self is one that is a gift of revelation and so give yourself the gift of revelation